Hey YouTube, I'm back again. Um, here's something I'm working on. If you guys have been keeping up with my videos, you'll know that this JD Squared Model 32 bender is something I just picked up. It's getting quite dirty in here for me making a mess in here, but I haven't even actually used this yet. Um, mounted it, made the stand for it. It's not bolted to the floor. It's actually going over there. Um, I was originally going to use this thing just as a manual bender for now and then eventually change it over to air over to hydraulic and I was having an issue though because the only company out there that I'm aware of that builds a cheap option to change this over to air over hydraulic is swag off road um, nothing against swag off road uh, you know they they really have done a lot I feel personally for the budget builders and the, the off-road industry with coming up with little knick-knacky type tools and things like that for for people that are on a budget. Um, what they what they have is an air over hydraulic setup that uses this Harbor Freight eight ton air over hydraulic ram. Okay, it's a system that clamps to the end of this ram right here okay now I've got this board on here but there's two bolts in here you can see them this one that's holding the manual handle and this one um, their setup uses this hole right here on this bender you run a new bolt through there and let me kind of draw you a top view of what what they have okay Here's, if we can get this camera to focus. Bolt, bolt, and the hole right here where they're adding the bolt. Okay, get the glare out of that. Their system is basically a, a, a tube that that bolt runs through and an arm that comes off like this. And then you have a box that essentially looks like a shackle mount. Okay, and then another box like this. You got a bolt. Let me see. Not here. You have a bolt here on the top. You know, we're not on the top, but you have a bolt here in the center that runs this direction. And has the nut here okay the ram sits in here like this the very edge of the ram pokes out here here's the the part of the ram that slides in and out okay that's how that their setup is you can go to swagoffroad.com and, and take a look at it and, and you'll see what I'm talking about there's other, other videos on there um, the problem with this setup is the mount is here Okay, because the mount is here, when you're pushing, when this rod is pushing out, it's wanting to swing this whole system in a direction like this. You see what I'm saying? Because the pivot point is here. What that does is it creates a side load right here on the rim. And eventually this seal that's here will fail okay um, there's people that, that swear by this system and then there's people that really have put this system to the test and they will tell you that they've had problems with this ram failing not being able to collapse it properly so on and so forth the proper way to do this would be to have a center mount right directly centered on the on the tubing versus over here so that the pivot point is here then then what that does is it doesn't create any side load at all okay now the problem with doing that is because this ram is so big this bolt right here is in the way so there's been people out there to get it really damn close because you know they've, they've shaved off a little bit of the the tubing that surrounds that bolt and they've done some modifications and gotten it really damn close to center but nobody's producing it because it's a very difficult setup to do um, <clears throat> so 
The other option is to do a vertical setup. There's a company out there that makes a replica of these benders, but it's set up vertical. This would be the top of the bender right here, and this would be the bottom. Tubing feeds in this direction and then curls upward into the air. So basically you would be like taking this part and then just pivoting the whole thing up like that. Okay? Um, they, don't, they do not use this bender though. It's, a, it's like a replica of it. Um, they do use this RAM. They do use another RAM system on there. I believe their bender, no die, no RAM, is like let me think here. I think they said it was like 600 bucks. Um, and and I'm, don't quote me on that because I, I don't believe they have a die. I'll have to double check. I'll, I'll put it an annotation if they do or not. Um, <clears throat> well, basically, the problem with that is it doesn't help those of us that already have a JD squared Model 32 bender that don't want to drop another $700 on an air over, air over hydraulic system for this bender. Um, this, this hydraulic ram is 80 bucks at Harbor Freight plus tax. If you got the 20% coupon, there you go. It's even cheaper. Um, so basically, this is what I'm coming up with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of having a center mount here, I'm going to utilize its actual mount. Okay? Both actual mounts. Because they're centered and those are the real mounts, I won't have any problems with side load. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this 3 16 plate that I have here and I'm going to fabricate two brackets that look like this with the exception of this angle here is not going to be there. This will be squared off maybe with a radius corner. I'm not sure that's kind of an aesthetic thing. But this was just some scrap wood that's why it's got this angle on here. But it'll be straight across and at least squared. Um, I'm going to take two of those plates, one will bolt in here on top of this plate, and then the other one will bolt here between the stand and this, and this plate, okay? They'll sandwich it. They're going to come off this direction, and as you can see by this table, 3 16 plate will flex, okay, if there's enough if there's enough leverage, it will flex. This is going to bend in that setup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to box the whole thing in as much as possible. The ram's going to the ram center point is right here for this mount. So I'll run a bolt down through here from this down to the other one. There'll be a bit of a spacer to make sure that it's lined up properly, and then it's going to come through here. And right here, I've got a. I'm going to take some more of that plate. And I'm going to build an extension bracket off that will let me have another bolt right down through here. Um, I would use this, but these bolts are three quarters of an inch, and that hole is not. So I need a smaller bolt. So what I plan on doing is just building that bracket, like I said. I'm going to box in the back side here, and then wrap it around and box it in this way for strength. And then again, I'll use a spacer inside there to make sure that the ram is centered top to bottom. And that's pretty much it. I'm kind of winging this, but I'm 99.99% I'm sure that this is going to work out and it's going to work great. Um, the load is going to push this arm the way it normally would. And then the other load is going to be here pushing the bender this way. And because of this angle that it's at, I don't foresee it putting any abnormal stress, you know, top, bottom, side loading, whatever, on anything outside of this joint right here. Okay? And because I plan on boxing this whole thing in, that should be strong enough where it won't flex at all. So... We'll see how it goes, but this is part one of that build. This is going to be a, a, a little bit of a slower process because I've got another project coming up here that's a, it's a paid customer stuff. This is mine, so it's taken back, back burner. Um, 
stay tuned for the you know the customers project that's kind of interesting they they sell bulletproof blast proof blast proof bulletproof glass and i'm building them a display stand to put pieces of you know sheets of that glass in there so they can shoot it and beat the dog shit out of it and show people that they're not getting through it so i'm building that that probably starting monday so i don't know i might get around to finishing this i still got to put the gussets on my welding table i was actually going to work on that tonight and, and opted not to because it's a little bit cold and I wanted to get this template built. So that's the template. Um, one other thing I tried, again, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know about this. This is a Harbor Freight product as well. It's a hydraulic hole punch. Okay, um, electricians use it for conduit, punching holes through, through sheet metal for conduit. Apparently, I guess that's what I was told. <laughs> um, I'm using it to punch holes like you would for like a hold on, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> anyway, sorry about that. Now I can't get my camera to focus. Anyways, I'm using it to punch round holes into sheet metal. So I did some experimenting with it, used it for the first time, and this is 16 gauge sheet, and that's the hole I cut through it with. Cut through it, no problem, like butter. No issues at all, very little distortion. Piece of cake. Um, this is, <clears throat> the Ram is a, uh, let me see how many ton this is. I forget how many tons. I think it's like 10 ton or something like that. And what do you know, it doesn't say on the, Anyway, I'll put an annotation for that too and let you know how many tons that is. It says it's rated for 11 gauge mild steel. 11 gauge is not much thicker than, than 16. I mean, it is, it is and it isn't. 11 gauge, I should be able to actually punch a hole through this plate right here, which might come in handy. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, let me let me check something out here. Here's my smallest die. Because I've got to cut some three-quarter inch holes for this plate. And that's not gonna work. <laughs> that's a little bit too big. I mean I could be bigger, but no, I'm not going to. Anyway, I will do a review of this here shortly. I'm going to put it to the test and see if I could actually, I've got to do the math on it and see what gauge 3 sixteenths would be. And, but I'm pretty sure that that is ballpark 11 gauge. And try to punch a hole through it. Like I said, it did it through the 16 gauge, no fucking problem at all. It's really designed for sheet metal. I don't really care if it can punch a hole through this. What I bought it for was because I was doing the, the, the gussets for that table and I was getting really upset because I wasn't able to freehand those circles as clean as I was hoping for. So I figured that that punch would at least be able to do the smaller circles, so it won't do this big one, but I can freehand at least one and, and have the, the other ones clean. And there's a die that is going to be just perfect. It's a little bit larger than those holes. I can go back over here and punch them all and, and clean them all up, which will be nice. But the other reason why I bought that was for dimple dies. And those will hopefully be ordered here within the next month or two. 
I've got to find a set that I like that's not going to break the bank, you know. I think the most expensive set that I saw that was that was something that would work with that was what was it? About seven hundred dollars. But the thing that was nice about it was that it wasn't just a dimple die. They were actual punches as well. So I wouldn't have to worry about drilling any hole except for a hole big enough to 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 put that you know the hydraulic ram through. And then after that it'll punch the hole the size that it needs to be, then then it will also dimple die the hole as well. So anyways just wanted to give you a quick heads up on that one that that's coming up here in the in the near future but this is this is the big project actually I, I'm gonna be really happy if this works out the way I think that it's gonna work out I think there's gonna be some people that are very interested in, in seeing this so that they could either build it themselves or something that maybe I'll go out and, and find somebody that will mass produce it for me so that I can sell it at a reasonable price. I've got to see how it works and put it to put it to the test. Go buy me a length of two inch quarter wall and again put it to the test. Run run as many bead or bends in that crap as I can. Get me some template some template bends for it and 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 just see how it goes, see how it holds up, if there's any flexing. And, and I'll record that. When I do that test, I'll, I'll definitely record that and let you guys see it. So, anyway, subscribe, comment, like. I know I've been posting a lot of videos. I hope you guys are watching them and, and enjoying them. I talk a lot, sorry. But uh, hopefully I'm giving you all the information you need. Again, subscribe, comment, and like. Check out the description. Go to my Facebook page. Like the Facebook page. And talk to you later. Bye.